So I'm Alexander McDonald. Uh, my nickname is Sandy, and uh, I'm director of Earth System Research Lab. And one of our really exciting things is Science on a Sphere. And we have some really exciting products, and I'm going to talk about one of them, the flow-following icosahedral model. So a meteorologist a uh, long time ago learned that just looking at the weather maps and trying to figure out what they're going to do is nowhere good as having a computer figure it out for you. So these models uh, are a key to being able to make weather predictions. And your television meteorologist, no matter who it is, if they're going to make a forecast, they're always going to look at these models because they show us what the future. So to do a weather prediction model, what we really need is the initial state. We actually start out with where all the parts of the air are, the heavy parts and the light parts. And we actually determine that from temperature and pressure and wind speeds. And we just move them with the winds, only it's a little more complicated because they start to get affected by uh, the interaction with the temperature and the pressure and so on. So we just calculate the future location uh, of all parts of the atmosphere based on where they started, and that's what gives us a weather forecast. So we're looking at the flow-following icosahedral model, the FIM. You're actually looking at the wind speed. So I'm looking at the winds at 500 millibars. And we see these uh, green winds uh, in part of it. And then we see these big red areas. And the center of the red areas, some of them have blue areas. So those red areas are the jet stream. And when we see a, a blue area, that's a, a really strong jet stream. And something we've discovered uh, and really known for a long time is the storms tend to follow those, those jet streams. So it's sort of like... You know, cars and trucks follow the highway, storms follow the jet stream. So uh, the model is telling us the dangerous areas, and of course that's why we uh, so appreciate the power of these models. One of the neat things about the FIM model is flow following. So normally what we do to measure how high something is, we say, oh, well, it's at 10,000 feet or 15,000 feet, and that's really good if you're a plane flying along. But there's another way to do it, and that is you're saying, we're going to actually make our measurement of where things are is just according to where the air goes. So if the air is moving uh, upward, you know, from 10,000 to 15,000 to 20,000 feet, we just put that as the line that we measure all of our things on. So we measure along the motion of the air. So we say our coordinate system is following the flow. Uh, icosahedral is something that many people have heard of. It's like uh, a grid. And if you look at a soccer ball, what you'll see is a bunch of hexagons and a pentagon. So when you look at a soccer ball, you see an icosahedron. And the neat thing about it is uh, we don't use a soccer ball. We actually use the same type of thing, except it has uh, thousands or even millions uh, of little hexagons. So we have a coordinate system in the horizontal that's like a soccer ball, except a lot more of them. And we have a coordinate system in the vertical that actually kind of goes the same place that the air goes. And uh, that's really kind of complicated, and the math gets complicated, but the forecast gets better.